This self-paced class will introduce the numerically controlled oscillator and how to use it. In this training class, I'll cover an overview of the numerically controlled oscillator, selecting the clock source, choosing the output signal mode, the accumulator and increment registers, the output control options, operation and sleep mode and effects of a reset, a brief example of the NCO operation, a few example applications, and then a summary. The NCO is a hardware peripheral in select PIC MCU devices and produces a square wave output based on an input clock and adjustable increment value postscaler. This method of numerically incremented change offers improved linear frequency resolution when compared to a standard PWM output. This can offer better performance for motor control, switching power supplies, or any typical PWM driven design. The NCO operates by repeatedly adding an increment value to an accumulator. Additions occur at the frequency of the input clock. The accumulator will overflow with a carry periodically, which becomes the raw NCO output. Basically, you are dividing the frequency of the input source by a constant value, giving you a linear change in frequency. The NCO has two modes of operation a fixed 50% duty cycle mode, and a pulse frequency modulation mode. The NCO output frequency is based on the rate of the accumulator overflow, which is shown in this formula. As you can see, the accumulator overflow rate is based on the ratio of the increment value to the accumulator overflow value. The increment value can be changed at any point via software to change the overflow rate and the output frequency. The NCO module has three sections that must be set up to use this peripheral. The clock source selection, the output frequency and mode selections, and the output control settings. First, let's look at the selection of the NCO clock source. The clock source is what drives the NCO module. There are four clock sources to choose from, and they are selected by the NCO input clock control register. These clock sources can come from inside or outside the PIC MCU device. Two bits in the NCO input clock control register select the input clock to the NCO module. They include the high frequency internal oscillator, the PIC MCU oscillator, an output from a configurable logic cell, and an external signal connected to the NCO CLK I.O. pin. The clock source can be enabled or disabled by setting or clearing the NCO enable bit. This essentially enables or disables the NCO module. The NCO enable bit is located in the NCO control register. A 1 setting enables the NCO module and a 0 setting disables it. Now let's look at the accumulator and increment registers. The increment value is a 16-bit value which allows for a minimum increment value of 1 and a maximum increment value of 65,535. The accumulator is a 20-bit wide value that overflows when its contents exceed 1,048,575 counts. The overflow of the accumulator triggers changing the state of the NCO output signal. The accumulator is a 20-bit wide register that is made up of three byte size registers. The NCO accumulator low byte, the NCO accumulator high byte, and the NCO accumulator upper byte. All three registers have read and write access from software, so you can preload a value in the accumulator to preset the overflow point. The ratio of the increment 16-bit value to a fixed 1,048,575 accumulator overflow value determines how often the overflow occurs. This controls the trigger of the NCO output waveform. The accumulator overflow rate is calculated by this simple formula. Using an increment value of 16,384, 
and the 16 MHz internal high frequency internal oscillator clock, the accumulator will overflow every 4 microseconds. If the addition of the final increment value forces the accumulator to exceed the 1,048,575 value that triggers the overflow, then any remainder will carry over to the start of the next accumulator count. For this reason, the accumulator can be overwritten in software to clear the accumulator. This can be accomplished during the interrupt service routine, for example. Now we'll cover the NCO output mode. The NCO has two modes of operation, a fixed duty cycle mode and a pulse frequency modulation mode. The NCO pulse frequency mode bit in the NCO control register determines in which mode the NCO module will operate. A 1 enables the pulse frequency mode and a 0 enables the fixed duty cycle mode. When the pulse frequency mode is selected, or the NPFM bit equals 1, a single pulse is generated on every accumulator overflow. The width of the pulse is based on a number of clock pulses from the clock source, selected as the input to the NCO module. The width of the pulse is set by the NCO output pulse width select bits, or the PWS bits in the NCO clock register. The pulse width has eight options to choose from. The width is set to a defined number of input clock pulses. When the fixed duty cycle mode is selected, or the MPFM bit equals zero, the output is toggled on every accumulator overflow, yielding a 50% duty cycle from the NCO output. The pulse width of the output waveform is set by the accumulator overflow rate. Each overflow changes the output state from low to high or high to low. By changing the accumulator increment value, you can alter the pulse width, and therefore the frequency, on every overflow. The NCO module has an interrupt option to make this easier to automate. Now we'll cover how to control the output modes. There are several output setup options to choose from, and they are handled by several different registers. The output can be connected to an I.O. pin or connected internally to another peripheral in the PIC MCU device. The output can also be inverted. The NCO output can be connected to the NCO I.O. pin, allowing it to be connected to circuitry outside of the microcontroller. Setting the NCO output enable bit to 1 connects the NCO output to the I.O. pin. The polarity of the output can also be inverted, thus making the output pulse a low-level signal instead of the high signal shown in the previous slides. The NCO polarity bit in the NCO control register determines the output polarity. A 1 makes the output active high, and a 0 makes the output an active low. The NCO output can also be directed to other peripherals, or just monitored in software. The NCO output bit in the NCO control register can be monitored to determine when an overflow occurred. The output can also be connected to other peripherals, such as the configurable logic cell or the complementary waveform generator. The final connection to these peripherals has to be set up by registers within those peripherals. The NCO overflow can also trigger an internal interrupt. To set up the interrupt, four bits must be set. The NCO enable bit in the NCO control register, the global interrupt bit and the peripheral interrupt enable bit in the interrupt control register, and the NCO interrupt enable bit in the peripheral interrupt enable register. The interrupt flag NCOIF bit in the peripheral interrupt request register will be set to 1 when the interrupt occurs, and will move code operation to the interrupt reset vector. The NCOIF bit must be cleared in software before exiting the interrupt service routine. The NCO interrupt flag will be set on the accumulator overflow even if interrupts are turned off. This allows software to use a polling method, if desired, to monitor that bit.
Now we'll cover the sleep mode operation and the effects of a reset. The NCO module will continue to run in sleep mode as long as the selected clock is still running. Typically though, the oscillator is stopped during sleep mode to reduce current draw. For applications that need to keep the NCO module running while in sleep mode, the high frequency internal oscillator clock is the best choice. If the high frequency internal oscillator is selected as the NCO clock, then the NCO will run in sleep mode even if the high frequency internal oscillator is also selected as the system clock. When the PIC MCU device is placed in sleep mode, the high frequency internal oscillator will continue to run if the NCO is enabled. The high frequency internal oscillator is a 16 MHz internal oscillator. All of the NCO registers are cleared to zeros when a reset occurs. So you must make sure your NCO settings are at the top of all your source code to allow for a quick recovery of the NCO operation. All the bit locations shown in yellow here will be reset to zero after a reset of the PIC MCU device. Now let's look at an example to help illustrate how the NCO output signals will operate. This chart shows a graphical representation of the NCO in operation for both output modes. The red signals, highlighted in yellow, show the input clock and then the pulse is generated when the accumulator overflows. The blue signal, highlighted in yellow, shows the fixed duty cycle mode would produce a 50% square wave with the output toggling between high and low on each accumulator overflow. The purple signals, highlighted in yellow, show the pulse frequency modulation mode will produce a single pulse on each accumulator overflow. The width of the pulse is then determined by the PWS bit settings. This graphic shows two settings, a 000 setting for single clock pulse and also a 010 or 4 clock pulse setting. Let's step through an example of driving the NCO in fixed duty cycle mode to output a square wave as shown in the blue waveform. On each accumulator overflow, that output will change state from low to high or high to low. The output waveform frequency will be equal to one half the rate of the accumulator overflow. For this example, we'll use a PIC 16F1507 to create a 500 Hz output square wave using the NCO. To do this, the NCO accumulator must overflow every one millisecond or at a rate of 1000 Hz. This will allow us to produce a 500 Hz output square wave signal from the NCO I.O. pin. If we rework the NCO overflow formula to solve for the increment value, we can determine the proper value to produce the 500 Hz square wave. If we use the 1000 Hz accumulator overflow rate times the overflow value of 1,048,575 and then divide that result by our 16 MHz high frequency internal oscillator clock, we get an increment value of 65. Now we need to set up the registers for the NCO module. We'll start with the increment registers. First, the increment high register is written to, followed by the increment low register. This will store the 65 increment value we calculated in the previous formula. Next, we set up the NCO to run in fixed duty cycle mode. We do this by making the NCO pulse frequency mode bit equal to zero. Two bits in the NCO input clock control register select the input clock to the NCO module. We select the high frequency internal oscillator selection by setting the bits to 00. zero. The NCO polarity bit is set to 1 to make the output active high. The first time the accumulator overflow occurs, the output will toggle from a low to a high state. The NCO output enable bit and the NCO enable bit are both set to 1. 
This will start the NCO module and connect it to the output I.O. pin. The output waveform can be disabled at any time by controlling these bits. The XC8 compiler code is shown here for the NCO setup. First, the NCO increment registers are set up to load the increment value we calculated. Then, the clock source is selected. And finally, the fixed duty cycle mode, polarity, and NCO enable bits are set in the NCO control register. The complete code sample is shown here. The configuration settings are established at the top. Then the I.O. registers are set up. Finally, the NCO settings are included. The NCO output signal is captured on the oscilloscope screen shown here. The output waveform changes state every one millisecond. The frequency measurement shows the output is very close to the 500 Hz desired. This will continue to run until the NCO output enable bit is cleared. Here are a few application ideas where the NCO would be useful. Used with a complementary waveform generator peripheral to drive a half-bridge lighting ballast circuit, the NCO can significantly reduce the cost of implementing an efficient control mechanism for fluorescent lighting. For applications where a single tone needs to be generated, the numerically controlled oscillator can be used to generate the tone and this can then be internally connected to the complementary waveform generator module to directly drive a speaker. Now let's summarize what we've covered. The NCO is a hardware peripheral in select PIC MCU devices. It can produce a pulse of variable width or a 50% duty cycle output signal. The output is controlled by the accumulator overflow. The increment register controls the rate of overflow. The NCO module has four different clock input options. The output can be routed to an I.O. pin or other peripherals. The accumulator overflow can be monitored or can trigger an interrupt. It offers increased linear frequency resolution versus PWM and it operates in sleep mode. Thank you for watching this training presentation. We hope it was helpful.